you know I I seriously watch a lot of YouTube uh, I watch all the a lot many channels about home renovation about building about fabricating and uh, I've learned a lot but what none of these guys ever tell you is how much carrying stuff it is how much lifting and moving stuff never heard anything about that now day before yesterday I had three bags of 35 kilo of lime I had five bags of 30 35 kilos of sand I have to load it up in the shop into the trailer I have to take it out of the trailer into the house I have to put it from the house into the cement mixer I have to drag it from the cement mixer to the wall where I'm putting it on that's just an average day today I bought uh, three bags of sand and two bags of lime so I'm carrying today 115 185 kilo in five runs from the shop into the van out of the van into the garden and then in the mix and then to the wall it's uh, it's seriously a lot of work and you know what that is actually the heaviest part of the whole of the whole job um, I dare to say and you know what um, if I were to do another project like this um, logistics would be the first thing I would look at seriously it would be the first thing imagine when you have uh, an apartment in a uh, busy urban area where you can't park in front of the door but yeah or you're in a small village with really narrow windy cobblestone streets where you can't really drive with a van and a trailer or my god you know I'm lucky I can park the, the van and the trailer the whole day long in front of my door and it's a small property um, but imagine this this uh, and the thing is I, I could buy this in bulk and have it delivered but I don't have the space I don't have the space to put a big cubic meter bag of sand for my mortar maybe later um, but yeah uh, this uh, carrying stuff dragging stuff moving stuff is, is, is a serious thing to consider when you start a project like this I'll tell you So, something completely different now. I'm in Barcelona, together with Nadia, who works here on a boat. And, uh, Hi, I'm Nadia. <laughs> I work here on a boat. And I just came over for the weekend, flew from uh, Lyon Airport to Barcelona Airport. And um, I really love Barcelona. And the reason being is really the architecture. Gaudi, famous architect, Sagrada Familia. Uh, Park Guel, uh, Casa Mila, we're going to have a look now and I'm going to make lots and lots of video photos if I can because it's so inspiring, these designs incredibly inspiring. Not that I could, you know, implement all of them in our house, but... Uh, take inspiration. Yeah, take inspiration, see what we do with it. Now, let's go, Casa, Casa Mila. Mila. <laughs> we said it at the same time! <laughs> Cool. 
Yeah, good morning. It's another beautiful day. Uh, well, a lot of rain, but actually uh, a lot of rain and a really high humidity, 97% is quite good for me because I have done uh, quite a bit of uh, rendering yesterday. Have a look. And uh, also a little bit of uh, cementing. Uh, some repairing on the outside wall and um, I can still feel uh, the cement is damp, the mortar is damp uh, which means that it's very slowly curing and that makes for a very uh, tough uh, 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 mortar mix uh, yeah, end result really right, I... Uh, what have I else have I done? I have just uh, installed the, the window frame, one window frame uh, without the the windows, just the frame uh, to see whether everything fits and everything fits and there's enough room for expansion and at this moment uh, it's hanging uh, water level straight and you can also see that uh, the wall is just going slightly outward because this is, uh, this is straight vertical and they have to be straight vertical, really important because otherwise uh, otherwise the doors will uh, fall open or keep falling shut uh, so yeah this is, this is an important job now I'm really careful that I'm not uh, distorting uh, the frame too much. I've secured it with two screws in the lentil, drilled through holes through the frame so it's hanging and then I've secured left and right at, at the beam with these uh, wedges I got, plastic wedges. I have to secure it on the bottom, wedge it in and then uh, yeah then I'm going to uh, install uh, the windows and see uh, whether they're properly open and close. Yeah, this is uh, this is really a super exciting day for me. Um, been really uh, anticipating this stage. A bit intimidated as well because uh, window frames, door frames, it's it's not my strongest point. Um, it's it's quite specialized carpentry work. Cool, uh, I'm gonna carry on. Yeah, that was, uh, that was quite a lot of fiddling around, huh? Uh, what I should have done when I took the windows apart for varnishing is I uh, should have marked which windows go in which frame and also uh, the hinges, they're screwed into the wood how many turns they were screwed in the wood because I think that was in the end the problem is how deep the hinges were screwed in the wood. They are not in a 90 degree angle screwed in the wood, they are a little bit off and it determines how far the windows are in the frame, how close they are together, how far apart. There's a lot of fiddling. I'm gonna seal the edges off with, uh, with a very good sealant. I, I, I never save money 
try to save money on uh, on sealant, on glue, on paint, that sort of stuff. That needs to be good. That needs to be uh, really A brand, good quality. Because you need to really rely on it. You are relying on it. It was good to have a rack ready <laughs> when you do this kind of work. So yesterday I have been able to uh, successfully place the window frames and the windows. Quite a lot of fiddling around, but uh, I've learned from it. I know which uh, mistakes I should avoid for the windows on the other side, which is going to be the next step. And the other side is here. Let's have a look uh, from the outside. I have uh, um, secured the window frames with two screws each up into the lento. And then I have uh, sealed the sides and the top with uh, special glue for this this kind of work i'm a strong believer in glue glues uh, these days uh, they, these days are, are really advanced really well engineered um, I'm, I'm i'm a stronger believer in in glue than in hard connections like screws because uh, we get temperature differences here from like minus 10 in the winter to minus 38 in the summer maybe even minus 40, uh, plus 40, so that's uh, almost a 50 degrees Celsius temperature change. So these frames are going to work, they're going to expand and contract, and the glue will uh, compensate for that. Uh, metal screws will not, so I'm inclined to take to remove the screws, while once the, uh, the glue has properly cured, the glue has been sitting now for approximately 18 hours and I don't believe it's cured. I will uh, let it cure for say 24 hours from today before I do anything. I have to uh, make the window sills. I'm going to make them from these old tiles, cut these tiles to shape and uh, render them with cement. But uh, today is a great day for rendering. It'll be dry, it'll be about 20 degrees during the day, which is perfect. It's not too warm, not too cold. It's a good working day. So I have just wetted this part of the wall. Make sure it's not too dry. And uh, I'm going to mix up uh, my first batch of uh, lime mortar. Today is going to be uh, a day of rendering. Rendering the outside, rendering the last bit on the inside, and then uh, possibly even uh, one of the side walls. We'll see how far we get. It's going to be a beautiful day. It's going to be quite a big difference tonight when I leave. I uh, keep telling myself when I'm doing the work 
is uh, basically the rules that I'm learning how to apply it. And one of these rules is not to panic when things fall. You know, when the mortar comes down and falls on the floor, that's, that's gravity. There's nothing you can do about it. You have to uh, learn to live with that. And also, it's relatively little what falls on the floor. It's not that much. Another rule is you don't smear to wet mortar. You smear to the dry area. And no panic when you see it's coming loose. You get another trowel full, smear it over. The problem will sort itself. I got the mix now that works for me, the ratio. Two sand, one lime. Give it time in the, in the cement mixer. To do its thing. It's a process, it's a chemical process what's happening. You can't rush that. And also, Another rule is don't overwork the material. You can do that all later. What I'm doing now is actually overworking it. It's not smart. Really? But you know, in the end, there's going to be a door over here. So. You know what? If I can do this in one coat. I'm also very happy because there is going to be a door over here. I'll probably do it in two coats. Okay, stop overworking it, Marius. This is just not going to end well. Okay, last bit and then the next batch. Don't work it into the wet area, Marius. What did I just tell you? All right, I'm gonna make up a new batch. While I'm uh, doing this rendering, I would like to take the opportunity to thank all the subscribers, the people who have commented. I think I've got well over 700 subscribers now in about one and a half month time it's completely exceeding my expectations not that i had any but uh, wow i also noticed that uh, youtube is starting to take me serious as a content creator emails from them how I uh, should engage my audience more one of the, uh, the tips was to uh, create polls or yeah polls or, or like things that you can win question and you have to give the answer and then you can win something I know one where the fudge is my hammer and where did I leave my measuring tape if you could tell me that you can win something you can win a uh, Working holiday to France. 
all inclusive. We well, have to sleep uh, in one bed in the camper van with me. But uh, if you also like garlic sausages, then the stench will be neg negligible. It's, it's not a super friendly product to work with. It's nothing like uh, the uh, modern renderings, you know, that are highly engineered. But I'm making progress. See what I mean? That is gravity. There's nothing you can do about it. You really have to learn to live with that. Oh good. So, quick update. Day before yesterday I started rendering outside. I started rendering here where the red door is going to sit. Uh, in the morning I started rendering. I went all the way up to approximately here. That went all okay. It stuck on. And then I made another batch, a second batch that day, and started rendering up. And it all came falling down. Um, I just couldn't make it stick, made the mortar mix uh, more wet, but it, it, it really didn't help. Now I think, at that time I thought, it is because I had a little bit of an old batch mixed in with the new batch. And sometimes an old batch can work as a catalyst for a new batch to go off, especially with epoxies. I thought that was the case. So yesterday, in the morning I did the same, started rendering, that went all okay, it stuck on. And in the afternoon I made a new batch, making sure that there's nothing of the old batch left in the new batch. And again, it did not stick, it, it, it did not work. Now, I am at this moment thinking that it was caused by the weather, by uh, the temperatures just heating up in the afternoon. Getting warmer, more sunshine, especially yesterday, was a really sunny day. And I think that the uh, the lime, the hydraulic lime that I'm using, just went off. It, it just uh, it started curing. Well, the, there was still a lot of moisture in the mix, but still it started curing. And that's what I'm thinking now. I, I'm not a professional in this. I really don't know. I'm learning as I, as I go. Um, but that's what I think. Now today, luckily, it's going to be overcast and it's going to be a bit rainy and the air temperature relatively is, is relatively high. So that, that, that should be a perfect day for rendering. So this is considered the first layer, uh, what you call the scratch coat. It's not scratched, but the first coat. And now I'm going to try to make it all even. And hopefully tomorrow I can put that door back. I hopefully can put trellises up here in between the windows on this side and put the rose bushes back up. What I did yesterday was uh, I started with the corners of these uh, windows, the window sills. Um, <clears throat> we don't have window sills on the big house, but I do like them. I do think they finish a little bit. You can see our neighbors across from the road, they do have window sills. 
Yeah, I think it it, it looks it looks prettier. So, uh, and I had these these tiles laying around. We got them out of the garden. Nadia wanted to throw them away, but uh, I thought, no, we don't throw anything away. And I uh, reused them, cut them, stuck them in the corners, and now I have to fill up the middle with some more tile and uh, render it over with cement and then it will look uh, pretty cool and that's actually also what I wanted straight from the beginning I wanted to reuse old materials as much as I can um, unfortunately I haven't been able to do so uh, in this small house basically due to time constraints sourcing used material is a lot more time um, consuming than just buying it new but anyway, today uh, I, I have to admit uh, my confidence levels really plummeted uh, when that rendering started coming off and not falling and I thought what have I done wrong and inside it went so well, did, it, did I do it slower inside? But you know what, inside the house, that wall that I did in last video or in some previous videos, it was cool, it stays cool inside that house. And there's no direct sunlight on that wall, so I really believe that it has something to do with that. This might mean that I, I should really pick my time for outside rendering. Mornings and then the afternoons maybe inside work. Right, what else? No, get to work. I think I've got the winning formula now. I made the mortar a lot wetter than before and uh, I'm doing bit by bit, not too much in a rush. That side uh, polished up really nice. You know, once it's a little bit set, I'll wet it again and then go over it with a, uh, with a sponge and, and sort of uh, polish it making sure that everything is really, really wet. My confidence is slightly restored. It's not, it's not an easy product to work with despite what uh, other channels may propagate it's really not an easy product to work with if I, if I would have done this with a conventional plaster I would have finished the whole wall in one day
haven't uh, filmed the last uh, few days just because the work became quite repetitive and I don't need to repeat everything to you that I'm doing I think it's getting boring uh, what I've done is I have successfully finally rendered the whole uh, wall I have installed the red door back painted and all fresh and I have uh, repositioned uh, the greenery I'm, I'm really not good at that I don't understand greenery it just grows in all kinds of shapes and curves and it's never really level uh, I wish they could invent square plants yeah so I've got to uh, redo that it's a bit uh, it's a bit odd right now I have installed those uh, window sills cut out from uh, the tiles that I had laying around I have finished them off with some cement but I need to uh, address that address that again and uh, yeah I mean uh, the front side is, is uh, finished I still got to uh, varnish those window frames and the windows itself but uh, this is 95% uh, finished now yeah, I'm quite happy. It, uh, it sort of uh, looks like it was in a way, but freshened up. Yeah. Let's have a look inside, see what I've done there.